Hey, and welcome to a video I'm doing on Diablo 4 crashes, which there are apparently a lot of, it seems like. Uh, there are various people having various different issues, so if you are having issues, don't worry, you're not alone. There are a lot of problems, and it seems like a lot of them are on the game side, on Blizzard's end of things. So, to start off with, we'll talk about some of the um, most common crashes, and then in the end here, I'll talk about how to do some troubleshooting yourself to kind of figure out, like, is it the game? Is there anything on your system that you can check to try to figure out, you know, what's going on? So starting off, uh, one of the most common things that has been coming up is people saying that their graphics will turn off, like their monitors will turn off, and they'll still hear the sound from the game, but they won't have any video. So that is usually a graphics card issue. So if you're unlucky, it's going to be an issue with the hardware itself, and there's not going to be a whole lot you can do with it. You could try flashing your B BIOS. So just go to the manufacturer's website and look for BIOS updates, see if there's anything there. Uh, you can go into your BIOS settings and try to turn on, you know, shift your graphics card to different uh, speeds. You know, instead of going to, you know, Gen 4, maybe Gen 3, Gen 2, something like that, see if any of, any of those work out for you. You can change your removable bar settings if you have that. Um, it seems like the higher end 3000 series are, or 1000 series and 2000 series seem to be the ones having the most issues. So if you have like a 1080, 1090, uh, 1080 Ti, stuff like that, those are going to be the cars that have the most issues. I have a 3090 and I'm having, you know, a, an issue where the, game, the entire computer shuts off. And we'll get to that next. But starting off with this one, what the easiest thing that you should try to do first is going to be go into your GeForce Experience tab if you have an NVIDIA card. If you have an ATX card, um, you can do something fairly similar uh, or just download the drivers off their website is another option. But get the drivers, go here to reinstall driver or install driver. When you go to install, just make sure you get a custom installation. And then after this runs through, what you're going to want to do is wait for it to come up with the option for doing a clean install. A clean install is going to completely remove all of the drivers that you have, and it's going to reinstall the drivers from scratch. So you will make sure that you have the freshest, cleanest drivers with nothing else in the way. I, honestly, I tend to do this every time I do a driver install, and, and here it is. You have the perform clean install option there. That's what you want to do. Uh, that will give you the best chance of having the correct drivers without anything else weird going on in the background. Another thing you can check is if you type in, or if you right click on the Windows symbol and you go into the device manager, this works with Windows 11, 10, and uh, 7 is a little bit easier if you're still using 7 or 8, but you know, who does that? And what you'll want to do is just come in here and look around, see if you've got any weird uh, drivers or stuff that's under other devices or anything that's not showing up with device info. If you've got anything that's in those, in those kinds of states, you'll want to figure out what that hardware is. I, I know what this is in my case. I've, I've been messing around with different motherboards, so I have extra drivers, so that's nothing to worry about. But for everybody else, make sure that you have all of your latest updates. Uh, the easiest way to do that is go to your motherboard or computer's manufacturer's website uh, and just search for drivers for whatever model you have and make sure you have the latest of everything installed. You could also potentially just go to system update in Windows, and then you'll be able to find most of what you're looking for there. The next thing that you can check is if you go into your documents folder and then Diablo 4, you can go into local prefs file here. And when you go in here, uh, one, if you're having all kinds of crazy issues, I would recommend just delete this file. It'll regenerate next time you run the game and it will actually act like you haven't loaded the game before, don't worry, don't panic. It doesn't mean all your characters are deleted or anything. It just means all your settings are going to be reset to the default. Uh, one thing I do notice helps is if you go into disable Chrome effects, you make sure that's set to one because you do want to disable those Chrome effect, Chroma effects. Those are causing some issues. Another thing that is useful to turn off is if you go to reflex and turn that to zero, that tends to help out as well. Um, do all those things and you might have a better chance. I also limit the foreground and background FPS 
I would lock it to whatever your monitor's refresh rate is. So if you're using like 4K, most of them are gonna be like 60 frames per second. If you're using a, you know, 240 hertz, 220 hertz, whatever, it says 220. But definitely don't go, it's not really worth going above 120, but you know, 60 is a good number. You're not gonna really notice much with 60 frames per second compared to 120. You're not gonna get there most of the time if you have high graphics settings anyway. So just, uh, Try doing that, that should help. And then of course, file, save, and then close the file. The other thing that I've found somewhat works as well is in this DT3D folder. So if you go ahead and pull up your Battle.net app, and then you click on Diablo over here, and then go to show and Explorer, it'll open up where all of your installed games are. You can then go into Diablo 4 and D3D 12 core. I've noticed that this file in particular seems to be an outdated version of this particular uh, driver of this DLL, and that might be causing some issues. So what you can do is actually go into your system 32 folder. It should be under this PC. It's in your C drive usually, and go to system 32 hit D a bunch of times so you get to these particular files. You can then take this D3D12 core file and overwrite that one. You'll notice this one's only two megabytes. So these are, this file itself is a newer version, but it's, it's a different, it's a different kind of the same file. This will still work. And I've noticed the game runs a little bit smoother when I do this. So that may fix a lot of the issues people are having. It's been working fairly well for me. I don't get crashes very often now, um, and the game tends to start up. Um, so if you're having the issue, well, we'll get to this issue now. If you're having the issue where your computer just shuts off and restarts, um, you know, that's entirely normal for your, well, it's not normal for your computer shut off, but when your computer shuts off and the fans spin up to the highest speed, that's entirely normal. Anytime your system posts, it's going to start the fans at the highest speed possible, and then they'll you know, go down to their normal operating speeds. Um, don't be concerned about that. I mean, you should be concerned that your computers are starting, but don't be concerned about this fan spinning up because that's completely normal. It's just the way computers act when you turn them on. Now, what I've found to fix that, in addition to all these other things that I've done, uh, if you're having an issue where you start the game and it just won't do anything, it seems like this has to do with a memory leak issue and that could be your system memory or it could be the video memory. The best way to fix that is to shut your computer down, go to the power supply switch or unplug the computer itself. You can either shut the switch off and leave it for a few seconds, maybe like up to a minute, and then turn off your, or unplug the machine. And then you can uh, you know, turn off it, turn it off that same way. Just removing all power is basically the goal. Hit your power button just to make sure that you know your motherboard uses any residual power that's there and from there that should fully clear out all of your memory everything should be completely blank at that point so next time you restart it should 100 percent be clear of any memory leaks uh, or it should have reclaimed all that memory that is the only other thing i found to fix these issues so that being said, uh, the last thing we can talk about here is what you can do to more or less kind of isolate whether it's your computer that's causing the issue or the game that's causing your computer issues. <laughs> so one piece of software you can use is Hardware Info 64. It's a very useful piece of software you, where you can view pretty much everything that's going on with your machine. You can view memory, speeds, temperatures, voltages, you can view the amperage, how much power draw is going through. Pretty much everything you want to know about your computer is in this software, and it's very, very useful, particularly because you can do some logging. So you can log absolutely everything that's happening. And this is an example of where I was logging, playing the game. I had it started up, and as you go down, you can see you know, all of these numbers. And at the end is where it stopped working entirely. So what you'd want to do is look and see like, okay, when the game crashed, was anything going on? And pay particular attention to things like your, your CPU package temperature. So 
right about here you can see this now so my cpu package temperature you can take a look and see like is it going ridiculously high if you're getting above probably like 80 to 90 celsius depending on your pro particular processor um you probably have to start thinking about doing some better cooling of your processor that could be the main issue i've got an i13900k so it's going to be running hot anyway um, being able to keep it down to these temperatures like on average is really good um, but you know you see like my cpu is not going above these temperatures here like 70 degrees usually so it shouldn't be an issue with the cpu you can also check your memory temperatures uh, for most memory, for like DDR4, if it gets above 40, you're starting to get into unstable territory. If you got DDR5, 50-ish um, is starting to get a little bit warm because um, DDR5 just runs a bit hotter. So, you know, keep those things in mind. This is just a helpful way to look and see if there's anything in particular that you can spot that's going on. Another thing that you can do to check individual components is you can get something like CPU-Z. Uh, you can pull up CPU-Z, and what this software will do is give you all sorts of information about your hardware. So you can see you know, your mainboard information, your memory information, your more information about your memory. You can find out information about your graphics card, all kinds of stuff. And you can also do a stress test. So a, a good idea with any machine you have to test your cooling to test the stability of your system is just run a stress test this software does it fairly well um, it'll stress test the system and just let it sit for you know probably 10 15 maybe up to like 30 minutes and just see if your computer crashes while you're running this if you do have crashes during that then you know it's something with your system and again you'd have to look at you know temperatures and see like are my temperatures getting too hot if you're, obviously if your temperatures are too high you're going to have to go ahead and get some better cooling but if stuff's crashing just for any other reason, then you have to start looking at what the hardware issues could be. A lot of the cases, uh, you know, power supplies can be a huge problem if you don't have enough power going to things. For video cards, what you can use to test that specifically is use something like Furmark. Furmark will let you do a really, really hard stress test on your video card and really max out the utilization of it. And then same kind of thing, let that run for 15 to 30 minutes and see you know where your temperatures are at if the system crashes then there you go you know you have a problem with your video card <laughs> oh one last thing to check that i kind of forgot about is one of blizzard's solutions for how to fix your game a lot of you probably already know this but you can basically go into the game itself click here on the little gear and hit scan and repair doing that may also fix some files um who's to say for sure at this point <laughs> but you can do that and that might fix some of your issues so those are all the tips and tricks i have hopefully they help you out they tide you over while blizzard tries to fix whatever other issues are going on with the game uh, until then i'll see you in the next one try not to die